Hello guys, how are you? The code of the keys here. In this video, I want to show you how to select data in E2 framework using Query Builder. How to use the Query Builder, which is basically a database agnostic tool so that your written select can be run on multiple databases. We're going to also see how to deal with this problem when E framework improperly quotes column names. Here, as you see, the empty space basically is quoted by the framework while first name should be quoted. And we're gonna see how to fix this problem if you have ever met this. It's really common. I am using sample database for this video. I have downloaded this test DB uh, and imported in my database, okay? And here is my database. I have the following tables. Uh, and in this video, I'm gonna deal with departments table I'm going to deal with employees table, which has around 300,000 records and salaries table. I have also created employee controller, employee and salary active record models. Okay, uh, let's start. And in my employee controller, I have created index method, uh, query data and print table. Okay, I'm selecting data and give it to giving it to the print table. And the result right now is empty table in the browser, as you see. So here is the place where we need to write selects. The most common way to write selects is to use active record models. But if you don't have active record models or you don't want to use active record syntax to write selects, then you can use a query class. So we're going to create new query instance and then we can call a couple of methods on this query instance for example select select everything from departments and finally we need to call a couple of uh, one of the uh, methods like all for example which will select everything is an array we can call one which will select the first element we can also call, call count to see how many elements uh, are in the table okay so let's let's call all and see the result in the browser as we see here departments are displayed if we want to select only uh, like the department code department number uh, we can right here select dipped no. If we want to select like uh, multiple columns, we can separate them by comma like dipped no and dipped name, just like this. Or we can also use um, array notation. So we can convert this into an array where the first element is the dep department number and the second element is department name and this will select both columns and it works in the same way as i said writing uh, this syntax is not really common because uh, in most time i work with active record classes because i do have active record classes for all my tables and i'm going to show you i'm going to spend more time on working with active record classes when selecting the data Okay, so instead of making a new query instance, we're going to call um, employee find, for example. So this will create a query instance. If we follow this find method, we see that it creates an active query uh, instance. And the active query is basically a child class of the query. Okay, so finally, our, uh, our employee find will return an instance of query still. Uh, Okay, so we can use the select from all methods still on this, and we can take the advantage of using active record syntax, and uh, we can comment the select and from, so that uh, it can automatically select everything from the employee table. And the employee active record model uh, has the is mapped to the employees table in the database. Okay, so let's save this, go to the browser, and we see an error. That's because we are selecting 300,000 records at a time. All records which are stored in the employees table. And the browser cannot handle this. Uh, not the browser, but the uh, PHP cannot handle this. Okay. So we need to limit the chart, the uh, number of rows. So we can use the limit method and give it like a 10, for example. And this will select first 10 objects first 10 rows in the table 
Let's come here and as we see, it's displayed. We can also use offset method, which uh, accepts a number also. And if we give here 10, this means that select next 10 elements, next 10 rows from the table. And in, it won't start with uh, Georgi Facello. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. So let's refresh this. It will start uh, from the 11th uh, employee from the database. Okay. So if we want right now, if we dump this data, we can see that let's have a look. Uh, it's an array which contains 10 elements there and all of them are instances of employee class. So, and we can use the advantage of being in employee uh, class instance like we can write some methods in the employee class and we can use that methods in the iteration of each object but if you want to uh, select them as an arrays if you don't want uh, to use objects it's always better to select them as arrays because they take the array take much less memory so if I put here as array method, come here, refresh it, I see that it still is an array of 10 elements, but instead of objects, there are arrays. And I want to show you one difference between as array and the objects, one big difference. So if you are working with big data and you want to select like 100,000 records, let's comment this offset. Okay, so I'm going to select 100,000 records and all of them should be objects. Let's remove the select and from, by the way. Let's come here and let's have a look. And we see this memory allocation error. So, but if we will select this as array, it will take much less time and it may work. Yes, exactly. So it, it works. So we are selecting 100,000 records, but as array, so instances are not created and thus less memory is taken. So this works fine. Okay, now let's get back to the select method and select only a couple of columns. Let's limit this first to like 10 again. Let's comment this as array also and have a look at here. So let's only select first name and last name okay this will work in the same way as it worked with new query syntax so i need to save this by the way i didn't save it yeah here are 10 objects let's remove this word dump to see in a table and here are 10 objects we only see first name and last name they are only the fields what are selected we can use array notation here also but before that i'm going to show you how to concatenate and take first name and the last name concatenated. Okay, I'm gonna save this and give it an alias like full name. Save it, come here, refresh it, and I see this uh, improperly quoting error. So if you have ever met this error, the fixing is really, really simple. So when you have, when you're using these methods which accepts the column names, you come up this quoting improper quoting error because the framework cannot understand where the column name starts and where it ends so simply you just need to take this string and put it in the array okay and that's it so let's, let's refresh the page and as, as i see I, I don't see any error but it doesn't print also the data and there's explanation why this happens that's because we are initializing uh, objects from the selected data and employee object employee class doesn't have full name in the database okay so if I give it here a first name that's an attribute now of the employee employee table employee class is mapped to the database table so it knows what columns exist in the in the table and the full name wasn't exist but first name exists Okay, I'm going to save this, come here, refresh, and I see first name and last name concatenated together in the first name column. Okay, so if I want to still call it full name, then either I need to add the full name attribute in the active record model, which I'm not going to do this right now, or I can select as array simply, and this will select everything what I put right here. So let's save this, come here, refresh, and I see this full name right here okay if i want to select multiple columns like full name 
and then the what columns does this have like uh, gender for example then here it is okay I can simply do it now let's use where method to filter the data so in the same way I'm gonna use where method all methods can be changed to chained together so I'm gonna use where and this where accepts uh, a string or array so the string uh, is really simple so I, like I can give here imp where the employee number equals something and let's have a look at the like this one the first one okay like the employee number is this one and we can change this all method into one because we know that we are selecting only one object okay so if I leave this here all it will just display only one record in the table okay so if you if you are sure that you are selecting only one you need to call here one method if you want to check whether the record exists in the database with this ID you need to call exists method and this will simply return true or false and we can dump this data let's exit right here and here we see true so the record uh, exists in the database if I put here some random numbers then it's false so this that's really a cool way to check whether the record exists in the database or not okay um, let's talk about where again and if you're accepting a query parameter right here the ID and you want to use that ID to select a employee uh, never concatenate it directly like this okay so, so that's good that's not good way uh, your code uh, is prone to SQL injection okay so you need to use named parameters like ID and then you can pass here an associative array where ID the named parameter corresponds to a variable taken from the uh, from the method and I can like take in default value right here one zero 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 one I think that was it yeah so let's save this come here and we see true the record exists in the database so let's use array notation which is more convenient so I can pass here array where ID corresponds to the ID and if we are using the array notation then this ID is automatically escaped and you don't need to bind parameter manually let's save this see the result in the browser and unknown column ID of course the column name is imp no okay let's refresh the page page and we see true we can give here array also like uh, employee number one employee number I think I put the additional zero employee number two and this will uh, also write a query where employee number is in uh, either one of those okay so let's save this and we will see true here again so the where method itself is really really complicated so it accepts uh, it has many different syntax to use with uh, like combining of multiple weirs inside the single weir and if you're interested more on this definitely check out the documentation so remember that documentation is your best friend and always work with the documentation even that even though that I'm working on the framework more than four years uh, on the e2 framework I'm always constantly checking the documentation because things uh, are forgotten and I need to remember things and there's everything written in the documentation how to work with weir with multiple different variations and so on so definitely check out the link which will always be in the video description by the way okay if I want to use a second weir I can use another method weir uh, but I need to use end weir or or weir so if I still use weir it will overwrite my previous weir and I don't want this okay so I'm going to use um, end weir for example gender is um, m corresponds to m okay and let's use method all right here and dump if there exists uh, a record in the table where employee number is either this or this and the gender is m let's come here refresh it and I see only one record of this okay so if I uh, let's comment this where if I uh, I'm selecting like a full name 
only, let's remove also the gender. If I'm selecting only full name uh, and I want to take uh, an array, a plain array of full names, I can use column method. If you're selecting just one column in the select, then you can use the column method, which will simply return a single dimensional array of the, of the full names. Okay, and we can also dump this right here. Here we see it. Okay, now let's select some data from the salary table and use some group by and having methods right there. So I have commented my employee selection code. I'm going to put this code on the GitHub. So for your reference, I just commented it and I created new select where I'm selecting from the salary table. I'm selecting everything plus the average of the salary. And let's have a look at the salary table. So each employee has multiple records of salaries. And these are like for different years. And I want to select what was the average salary of each employee. Okay, so I'm selecting this grouping by the employee number, and I'm also selecting the uh, those employees who has average salary greater than 60,000 in a year. And I'm limiting, of course, uh, by 10 not to have a memory allocation error, and I'm selecting as array because I want to select this additional field also. And let's give it an alias uh, AVG salary. Okay, let's save this, go to the browser, refresh it, and we see it. Okay, all employees uh, who has salary greater than 60,000, and as you see, all of them are more than 60,000, not this one, my bad. This is not actually the salary um, of what we are interested. So this is the salary, this is the entry of the salary. So uh, the salary, the average salary is at the bottom. And all of them are greater than 60,000. If we remove this having condition, we can have a look at this. As we see, there are less than 60,000. So this works really good. Okay, and one more thing. Let's use order by to sort all the records based on the average of the salary. In ascending, and as we see here, all salaries are sorted by uh, ascending order, average salaries. That's it for this videos, guys. There are many, many other things I, I want to show you, but this will make my video hours of long and I don't want this. Uh, so definitely check out the video documentation there. Uh, my bad. Definitely check out the link in the video uh, description, which will be a documentation link and uh, see how to select data with all different options, how to query data, how to use the weird parameter and so on. There will be much, much more than I just explained it. And uh, it's really hard to like cover everything uh, in videos. And yeah, definitely check out the link. And again, thanks for watching. If you like the video, uh, uh, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Let me know in the comment section what you think. I always be really glad to like hear your feedback and see you guys in the next time.